Haha. <laughs> you guys, I've been having literally the hardest time with technology. My computer has decided that live streaming is not for it. It's not the course in life that it has chosen. So I have had <laughs> nothing but problems. Um, man, I, I, I finally figured it out though. I am, um, I am borrowing, <laughs> borrowing uh, the church's um, live streaming uh, uh, deal here, um, so I can so I can work on my own. Hopefully, I will figure out why my computer is technologically retarded when it is a computer. It's supposed to know what it's doing, and evidently it does not. So uh, yesterday, um, which I meant to post this yesterday, but you know, obviously with my computer. So, uh, but yesterday the church started a, a fast, a 40 day fast. And I, I really, I, I really like it. It's a great way to start the year. Um, I'm actually still on the fast from last January. Um, uh, so far it's been a year that I've been on this fast and I, I'm still going. Uh, in fact, I'm adding some new stuff to it. If you don't know what fasting is, um, fasting traditionally is giving up, uh, food uh to focus on fast on on prayer and and on um worship and on on reading the bible that kind of stuff okay so that's a general idea um however there are some people who maybe aren't really ready to make that big of a step um first off you don't have to do an all food all day fast you can do um fast one meal you can fast something that you really really like like instead of eating um let's say going to the store and getting like really unhealthy uh, but really tasty food you don't have to do that you can eat just something real bland um, some of us would rather die than eat salad and that's exactly a good point uh, <laughs> uh, you know if, if you can't go without food for health reasons or whatever you know don't do something stupid that'll kill you but uh, you can also fast from other things too um, if uh, if you watch a lot of TV you know maybe it's a good time to turn that off and spend the time that you would have spent uh, on watching stuff or playing video games or whatever, focus that energy instead on uh, on praying. Really, uh, uh, it changes the way you think. And honestly, without distractions, we do a lot better. Um, one of the things I always suggest is just stay off social media if you are if you are um, in a time of fasting. Um, I've been off my personal Facebook for a while, and it just feels amazing. Um, I'll still post stuff to it if I'm on my ministry page and I think, oh, that, that that's interesting. I'll just go ahead and post it over there. But I never actually keep up on it. For all I know, nobody's even seeing what I post on my personal. I don't really even care. Uh, you know, when you when you look at Facebook all the time, it's all you can think about. You get on every five minutes. But when you're not on Facebook, it's like, wow, I have all this time. It's just so fun, so amazing. Uh, well, anyways, uh, I say all that to say this. You know, the church started this 40-day fast, and I want to just give a few reasons why you should read your Bible. One of the big things that our church uh, pushes is um, reading through the Bible in a year. And obviously it starts at the same time as the fast. So uh, there's that. So reading through the whole Bible, wow, that's a lot of reading. But uh, it's actually not as scary or intimidating as it sounds. Uh, they have two different ways that they get it out. The first way is what's cro called chronological. That means you're reading it through in the order that the events happened. I like this because I'm more into history. Um, but then there's some people who just like to start in Genesis and go through Revelations. For that, they have a little calendar. So you can get that from the church if you're interested. Or you can go visit their uh, website, TularosaCommunityChurch.com. Really easy. And uh, on the top tab, they have a Bible reading plan. You click on that, and it'll have the chronological uh, reading there. But, excuse me. As a Christian, you know, sometimes we do things without actually knowing why. So, just real briefly, here are just three very simple, very easy things of why you should read your Bible. Um, believe it or not, a lot of Christians don't read their Bible, and so they don't know what's actually in there, and obviously they're not real prepared uh, <laughs> to give answers to stuff. Um, the first reason is it gives us knowledge about God. You see, God isn't what we decide for him to be. God is who he is. And so when we when we read the Bible, it gives us a chance to get to know Him, and uh, you know to know Him in a deeper way. And you might say, "Well, I know who God is. You know, I got the basic idea. It's okay." But here's the thing: when you're involved with someone, when you love someone, you you want to know more about them. You know what I mean? And and sometimes we don't even realize how much we don't know about God. 
Uh, this is called pride. <laughs> uh, I, I reached this place where I was like, I know everything. You know, God can't teach me anything. And, um, you know, that that's just, I don't I don't need to read the Bible because I already know what's in there. And, and, you know, real prideful stuff. But it's a place that we have all been as Christians. And um, when, we, when we read through the Bible, it kind of reminds us of how much we don't know about God. And there's a lot of times that God will do things that we're not okay with. But when we when we when we learn about it, we we're able to understand him in a, in a new light. Uh, one of the things I bring up quite often is in uh, the Old Testament how he commanded the the Israelites to kill the Canaanites. Oh, that's that's a real loving God. You know, we we start criticizing him and oh, how dare he do such a thing? But if we just stop trying to excuse what he did and just pay attention to what he did, we can learn something. And that's the whole point of the Bible is that we learn stuff about God. It gives us knowledge about him. But there are two other things I want to mention. The first, or the, the second, <laughs> is the Bible gives us answers. Why is this? It answers that. See, in Genesis especially it does this. So it says, okay, man and woman were created uh, equal. They were, they were made in the image of God. He created the male and female. So then we look around us and we see, well, that's not what I see. Why is, why is the world not operating like you said it was supposed to? Didn't you say it was good? Well, then you get to ch chapter 2 or three, and it says, uh, okay, well, because you guys sinned, now there's always going to be conflict between you two. Well, now we have a reason as to why that th that's looking like that. Um, okay, well, God, you said that you created the world e world good, but all I see around me is just bad things. Why am I seeing bad things around me? Well, when sin was introduced into the world, see what I mean? It gives us a lot of little answers like that. Um, how did this world get to get to be here? Well, God made it. So it gives us a lot of answers like that um, about stuff. Why am I going through struggles? What's the meaning of life? You know, questions that people have asked and that people have wondered a lot are answered in the Bible. And uh, that's just a real powerful thing. The problem is a lot of times we just don't read it. <laughs> it's hard to get encouragement from something that you don't actually read. I mean, let's say, for instance, I write a love letter to Gracie, but she never reads it. Well, it's not going to really have that big of an impact on her because she didn't read it. So, uh, you know, uh, so first it gives us knowledge about God. Second, uh, it answers questions that we have. Um, all, well, that's, anyways. And then third thing, um, it will give you peace as you feed your spirit. See, what we do is we feel real, um, what's the word, uh, unsettled in our spirit. We feel dissatisfied, unhappy. So instead of seeking after God, we just think, oh, this is just something that I feel. I need to deal with this just, you know, by distracting myself or whatever. But the truth is, we feel unsettled in our spirit because our spirit desires for a closer relationship with God. And as long as we don't seek after Him, there will always be a missing piece in there. Now, no matter how much you seek God, there will be a little bit, um, a little bit of that still. Let me say it like this. Worship doesn't, and seeking after God, it doesn't and the, and the desire for God, it, it deepens the desire for God. And that desire isn't going to be met fully until we get to heaven. So whereas you can't live life without um, that experience with God that just you know gives us peace and comfort, you also will never come to a point in your life where you've had enough. The more you seek God, the more you realize you need to seek God, and the more you, the more you realize that, the more you do, and, and, and it just gives you a, a deeper understanding and a greater appreciation. But what we try to do is we try to just read our Bible every once in a while, maybe, maybe, eh, whatever. I'll do it next year or something. I don't know, whatever. Or pray only when bad things happen. But the truth is God wants us to have a relationship with him that rocks our world. Now, I know that that's not exactly the most tactful way of saying that, but that's exactly what happens. You know, we still go through problems. We still have struggles. But the difference that God makes in our lives is with, it's just beyond compare. Uh, God does something in our spirits. It, it, Michael W. Smith wrote this song, and in it he says, You wake something in my heart. And that's exactly what happens as we go through times of prayer and fasting and reading through the Bible. Um, so I would highly encourage you, please read through your Bibles this year. Make this a year where you make a conscious effort to seek after God. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. God will always be found by those people who seek him. If you seek him with your whole heart, you will find him. You will. And uh, just, he, God has a way of turning our tragedies into 
into good things. And honestly, I just want to keep encouraging you to you know, keep seeking after God. Well, I tried seeking after God, and he didn't answer me. I get that. Just keep seeking after God. Uh, I went through a, a couple year long, you know, dry spell um, where it just didn't seem like God was hearing my prayers. It didn't seem like he was around. It was just, yeah. But I got through it, and God showed me stuff that I'd never known before. And, you know, take for instance now, um, you know, I have anxiety and depression and, and stuff like that. But here's the thing. Beyond all those things, beyond the struggles that I that I face in the day-to-day, -day, I have hope. Because I know that any depression that I have isn't going to last for forever. Um, it's all a pill from here. And I know that uh, anxiety, and no matter how bad of anxiety attacks I have, anything like that, I know that it's all a pill from here. It, it only gets better. The closer I get to death is the closer I get to life. Um, like, for instance, uh, a pastor friend told me this um, with the death of my third child. Um, you know, every day that I live isn't a day that I'm further away from them. It's a day that I'm closer to them. See, my son didn't have to experience uh, the pain that's involved in life. He didn't have to go through, um, you know, the, the problems that we do. He he just got a, sh a, a golden ticket, you know? He, he went straight to heaven. Well, how cool is that, you know? I, I, to just change your perspective. And uh, man, I tell you what, my life is so much different now. And I'm, and I'm filled with such hope. And um, even on my bad days, it's still better than the best of my good days were before. I hope that that makes sense. Uh, hopefully. So, you know, I really want to encourage you to read your Bible. Please, please, please read your Bible. You'll be surprised how many things are in there that you didn't know were in there. And how many things aren't in there that you genuinely thought were in there. And there's always something to learn more. You know, if you just slow down for a second and really study what you're, what you're reading... Man, John 1 verses 1 through like 4. I have read that a billion times. I memorized it in Greek. I knew the passage, and I was reading it through the other day, and it just something clicked, and I was like, how did I not get that? So, you know, I just really want to encourage you. Um, stay in there. Stay in the Word. Uh, God has uh, stuff to show you, and um, it will always be worth its while. You know, the Bible says... God's word doesn't return void. And that's absolutely true. It doesn't return void in our spirits either. And we know that he who started a good work in us will be faithful to bring it to completion. Past my struggles, past where I feel, past my sicknesses, we know that God is in control and that he's using the things that we see as tragedies for the better. Not just for his glory, but also for our better well-being. And we look at the tragedies and we say, well, how is that possible? And uh, sometimes we'll never know in, in this life. But we can know that the good God said that he's working it uh, to, to, to ultimately our, our benefit. Um, and that's just an amazing thing to know and really comforting. So please, please, please read your Bible through this year. I don't know what else I can say to get you to, to do it. So I guess I'll just say it again. Please read through your Bible this year. Boop.